Okay, so today's lesson is again sections 2.1 and 2.2 in our textbook, but this time when we're graphing functions, we're going to be doing it with respect to a limited domain. So yesterday's lesson, you guys graphed some functions. Um, you guys then took the function and then figured out what the domain and the range was based off of your picture. This time, though, we are going to graph with respect to a limited domain. So we're going to kind of restrict what values you put on your graph, and therefore your range is going to be affected as well. So let's take a look at number one here. Number one has us plotting a linear function. Hopefully you're catching on that this is going to form a line. It's a linear function. Now if I were to graph this like normal, I would go to negative 4 in the y-intercept. I would go up 2 into the right 3, up 2 into the right 3, up 2 into the right 3. Now in algebra 1, this would have been totally fine. right? This is our line here, and it would have a domain and a range of all real numbers, like we talked about yesterday. But today, we are restricting that domain. Now we're saying, I only want to see the part of the graph where it's between negative 3 and 6, okay? So let's think about that. When x equals negative 3, so that's here, right? This point appears on that graph. So at negative 3, 6, I would want to have an open circle. Because if you look, right, it's saying not exactly at negative 3, but what, where is negative 3 on this graph? So I have an open circle here on negative 3. And instead of going past 6, where would my line go? Sorry. Instead of going past 6, right, this arrow is showing that we're going forever and forever. Once we get to x equals 6, we're stopping, and we're going to have a closed circle here as well. So this is the only portion of this graph that I now want to uh, show. So if you want, you can actually extend this and show with dotted line that this is going on forever, but this is the only portion of that graph that I want to show. So now when we talk about the range, let's look at the lowest y value. The lowest y value here is at x, or sorry, y equals negative 6, right? This is the low point, and then here's the high point. So the low point is at negative 6. It's less than y, and then less than or equal to 0. Not 6, but 0, right? The, the highest point of this y value is at y equals 0. You can follow it all the way over here to y equals 0, right? This is the overall range, okay? All right, now, if we were trying to graph that exact same line, but only thinking about positive reals, so let's think about that domain here, positive reals. That means numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, and anything else in between there. So when I take a look at that, you know, that graph that we have, let's actually look at the, the graph that we've already done here, positive reals, all of these values beyond this axis here, beyond the y-axis, so to the right of the y-axis, these are all positive real x values, okay? So that means my graph starts at negative 4 and continues to the right. So instead of having a, a closed circle on negative 4, now I have an open circle. I have an open circle because here x actually equals 0, right? Well, x equaling 0 is not a positive real. It's non-positive. So I want to have an open circle there. And then I'm going to shade, or sorry, I'm going to graph you know, up 2 to the right 3, up 2 to the right 3, just so I can get a nicer, cleaner line here. But these points here satisfy the domain of all positive reals. So these are all my positive reals. Now let's talk about the range. So the range of this function here, the low point, is at negative 4, and it keeps going forever, right? This keeps going forever and forever. It doesn't have a max height, so my range is y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, so let's go to the next graph. All right, so we have a quadratic here, so we're going to expect that this is going to be a parabola, right? Now, you don't necessarily know what this is going to look like because we have that negative sign in front, so I want to make a chart. So when in doubt, you always are going to make a table of values. Later on in this semester, we're going to kind of talk about how you can graph this without a table. But for right now, everything that we're going to graph that's not linear, let's just use a table of values. Okay, so um, let's use our standard negative 2 to 2. So I'm filling out this table very quickly, but you can go ahead and pause it if you need to verify these numbers or see how I'm getting them. I'm just plugging them back into this function, and I should get negative 4 negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 4. And that's because when you plug in 
negative 2 and you square it, you still have that negative sign out in front. So even though this quantity is going to be positive 4, you still have the opposite sign out in front, that negative in front, which is why you have the point two, negative 2, negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 4. Okay, now my domain here was all reals. Okay, that's why I'm just graphing this, and I know I can plug in any point that I want for x. I can plug in negative 32, and I can figure out where that point is. It's obviously not going to appear on my graph, but I'm allowed to plug in anything I want because the domain said all real numbers. Okay, so we look at the range here. We have a max height of 0, so that means the, the range here is going to be less than or equal to 0. Y is less than or equal to 0. Okay, now, when we get over here to non-negative reals, let's think about what that means. That means positive reals, including the number 0, okay? So I'm going to look back at my graph here, and I only want to graph numbers that are positive reals or the number 0. And that starts right here. So it's only this portion of my graph that I want to use. So I have a closed circle on 0, again, because it is a non-negative real, so that's allowed to be in there. We're going to have a closed circle on there as opposed to an open circle. So I just graph the same points that I had before. And this is our graph for non-negative reals. Now when we talk about the range, the range here is actually the same as the range beforehand because we still have a max value of 0. So we have y is less than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, if you are a table person, you like to draw your table and you like to see your table of values, you can show um, that you're never going to have anywhere else on this function. You know, you're not going to be plotting anywhere else because if you only select, remember your domain here says non-negative reals, so if you only select non-negative reals here, that would be numbers like 3, 6, I don't know, 144. You can't put a number like negative 2 into this domain. So before, we were allowed to put negative 2 in, right? We got an output of negative 4. We are no longer allowed to put negative 2 in here because it is not a negative, or it, it is um, uh, a negative, which means it's not a non-negative real, okay? All right, so moving on. Let's take a look now. Um, this next example here has another quadratic, so this is going to be another parabola, okay? But our domain is very restricted now. Okay, our domain is only the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. When we make a table here, we are only allowed to put 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We can't put numbers in between those numbers. It's only those five digits that can go in. So I'm going to plug in, you know, in this function, 0 squared minus 6 gives me negative 6. 1 squared minus 6 gives me negative 5. 2 squared minus 6 gives me negative 2. Uh, 3 squared, 9 minus 6, gives me 3. Uh, 4 squared, 16 minus 6, gives me 10. Okay, so here are my table of values here. So I have the point 0, negative 6, 1, negative 5, 2, negative 2, 3, 3, and 4, 10. So, now, despite the fact that it looks like a nice curve here, we don't actually want to draw in that curve. We don't want to do that because this is implying that all of these points in between 3 and 4 are allowed on this graph, and they're not, right? Our domain says only the points 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So only the x-coordinate with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is allowed inside this graph. So you can actually, if you want, put a dashed line in between because this is saying this is not part of our function right now within that domain which means our range is also only going to be a set of five numbers these are the only numbers that appear inside our range negative six negative five negative two three and ten okay so it's a little bit different than what we've been doing before because we have such a limited domain all right now we're going to do that same exact picture or same exact graph this time with negative reals. Okay, so negative reals means numbers like negative 4. It does not mean numbers like 2 or 6, but it also um, means numbers like negative 0. 0.00001. Okay, most people have a tendency to start at the number negative 1. So they look and they say, okay, I'm going to plot 
for my x and y value here, I'm going to plot negative 1, which means if I square 1 and I subtract 6, I get negative 7. Okay, and again, I'm just plugging it back into this original function over here. So negative 1 squared minus 6 gives me negative 7. Now, if I go to negative 1, negative 7, oops, there it is, and I start my graph from there, it's going to look like this, okay? But we have to consider these numbers inside here are also negative, right? So this is actually starting at 0. Even though, so 0 is kind of odd. Even though 0 is not a negative real, it represents kind of the cutoff point, right? It's between, it's exactly in between all of your positive numbers and all of your negative numbers. So this is the point where we actually need to start at. So we're going to start at 0. And if we plug in 0 squared minus 6, we get 0 comma negative 6. This time, instead of having a closed circle, I'm going to have an open circle, though, on the 6, on 0, negative 6, okay? So I only want to have other negative reals, so I can plug in things like negative 2, negative 4, anything I want. So let's see, we've got already the point negative 1, negative 7. Let's plug in negative 2. So negative 2 squared minus 6 gives me 4 minus 6 which is negative 2. So I have the point negative 2, negative 2. The point negative 4, comma, let's see, negative 4 squared is 16, minus 6 gives me 10. Okay, so negative 4, 10 is all the way up here. And this now is going to be connected with a solid line, not a dotted line because we are allowed to do any number, right, that is a negative real. So that's all numbers that are not positive or zero, okay, which is represented by this part of the curve. So when we talk about the range, the range of this function, the low point here is at y equals negative 6, so, and it doesn't end, right, it keeps going forever and forever to positive infinity, so we have y is greater than, oops, y is, sorry about that, y is greater than or equal to negative 6, okay? Okay, in problem number four, we have an absolute value graph. So remember, just a quick sketch, this is going to be a V shape, okay? Especially when the domain is all reals, this should be a V shape. So when we pick values here, let's try our traditional negative 2, positive 2. Um, let's plug in negative 2 here. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. So go ahead and plug those in. Oops, that's 0 minus 2 be a negative 2. Uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Absolute value is 1. And 0 is 0. Okay, so let's plot those points. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, negative 3. Or sorry, positive 3, negative 1, positive 3. 0, 2. 1, 1. And 2, 0. All right, so I don't really have a very good V-shape as of right now, right? So let's e keep increasing. Let's try to find more values for X here so if I get a better idea of what that's going to look like. So let's plug in 3. So I have 3 minus 2, 1. Absolute value of 1 is still 1. So I have the point 3, 1. And now I can see that it's actually bouncing back up here, right? So I have the V-shape. It's coming down to 0. It's coming back up, and it looks like it's going to keep bouncing back up like this, okay? So you can verify if you want to. So 4 minus 2 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is still 2. So 0.42 and so on. Okay? So this is the graph of your absolute value here with the domain of all reals. I don't have to worry about, you know, restricting the domain at all because it's all reals. So this is the graph. Now for the range, the lowest point here is at y equals negative 2. Or I'm sorry, y equals 0. Okay? The x equals 2, but the y coordinate here equals 0. So I have y is greater than or equal to 0 because, again, it keeps going to, po uh, to positive infinity, okay? And in the second part of this, I only want to have inside my domain values that are greater than or equal to 0. So let's go back to our original graph over here with all reals, and let's look at only x values that are greater than or equal to 0. So that means we start here, and we go on forever this way. So in other words, we ignore this part of the graph completely. We are only going to focus on this portion of the graph, okay? So I want to graph from 0, 2, uh, 1, 1, 2, 0, and onward. So 3, 1, 4, 1, and this is what it's going to look like.
okay? So I have a closed circle on 0, 2 because 0 is included, right? x is greater than or equal to 0. That's included within my domain, okay? Now for the range, the lowest point of your y value is still at y equals 0. So this value here is still y equals 0. And it still extends infinitely in the positive direction, so it's still y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so that's the last part of the lesson here. I just want to recap what we did. We started off with talking about, um, you know, limited domains here. We, we started with the linear equation. And when we graphed this um, yesterday, it was always all reals for domain and the range. But when we have a limited domain, it does affect the range. So that's kind of the whole point of this is when you have a limited domain, your range is therefore going to be affected. So your graphs look slightly different depending on whatever, you know, your domain is. Here we had a domain of all reals, so we had an entire parabola, right? The entire parabola here, let me highlight it, was included. And then when we switched over to a non-negative real domain, it's only this portion of your graph, all right? When we came over here, this is probably the trickiest of them all. This is where we had just those limited numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 were the only numbers included in our domain. Therefore, we had distinct points here, 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 and here meaning the range then was only these numbers, okay? So it's not all of the numbers in between here, which would be represented by a, you know, a solid line. So you can only include, when you have a range that looks like this, these particular numbers, okay? All right, so um, tomorrow we're going to get some more practice with this, because this is a pretty tricky uh, thing to do when you start talking about limited domains, so we'll get some more practice in class. All right.